Joining us now, Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin, former CIA analyst, former acting assistant secretary of defense with your Pentagon and intelligence uh, experience, as well as, you know, including your deployments overseas. Uh, Congresswoman, talk to me about your first reaction when you read uh, credible accounts by superb Pulitzer Prize winning reporters about what General Milley was concerned about, which was a coup and which was the president of the United yeah. States refusing to leave office. Yeah, it, it did not surprise me at all. And in fact, many of us had been thinking about this, including General Milley, um, for quite some time, ever since Lafayette Square, early June of 2020. Um, you know, we had been working certainly on the House Armed Services Committee, a few of us to get General Milley and Secretary Esper on record of what they would do and what they would not do if President Trump, after the election, attempted to stay in office. Um, the president, former president, telegraphed that to us since May of 2020, that if it, he didn't win, it was going to be an illegitimate election. And so we worked really hard and actually asked General Milley for questions on the record of how we would respond if they attempted to intervene in the election, not uh, allow a peaceful transition of power, and if they were given an order for a fabricated military operation for the gain of the president and not the national security interests of the United States. So we knew this last summer. Um, and I'm, I'm just very glad that General Milley and others were there to help to prevent it. Did you get reassurance that the military, the military and other national security officials would protect uh, and defend the United States against, let's say, a, a, a rogue commander in chief? Um, I did. I mean, you know, we wrote a letter to Secretary Milley. It was public. He responded. I'm sorry to General Milley. And he responded in late August on the record. Um, Secretary Esper also responded in, in September, not quite as clearly. Um, and then, you know, we had a lot of informal communication with General Milley and just making sure that he knew um, that it was it may really come down to him, that he have to he might have to make some really tough decisions in the latter days of the Trump administration. And it, it feels like he did. Did you have increased concerns after Secretary Esper left? was replaced by Acting Secretary Miller, and then there was a wholesale transformation at the Pentagon of the civilians, who included a lot of, um, shall we say, very hard-line uh, people who had been at the White House, then in the intelligence community, and had had checkered careers, to, be, to put it kindly. Yeah, absolutely. I think even before uh, Secretary Esper was formally relieved of his job, we knew here in Washington that he wasn't getting access to the president. He wasn't invited to the Situation Room, that he was being boxed out because of how he responded uh, to the events of Lafayette Square. So, you know, clearly the President Trump was waiting for the election to happen. And that was just another person who could physically have a chance of being in the room with President Trump to stop some sort of military escalation or use of, you know, or attempted use of the military in our in our peaceful transition. So, of course, it raised alarm bells and it put even more pressure, frankly, on the uniformed military who are typically super uncomfortable being involved in this in any way, right? They don't want to be political. We don't want a political military. So it put a lot of pressure on the uniforms right at the end of the, the term. Uh, now, former President Trump did put out a statement after the book came out slamming General Milley, saying, quote, he lost respect for him when he walked with him across Lafayette Square to that photo op. Of course, that was June 1st, I believe, uh, with the Bible. And Trump says Milley choked like a dog when he said later that it was a mistake to be there in uniform. He was in camis that day and uh, later explained to a political photo op and uh, went on camera and apologized to the troops and to the country. And that that cost him the respect of the president. Well, then then I'm glad he lost the respect of the president, because I don't think Americans understand what exactly the importance was of Lafayette Square and this idea that we would use uniform military to clear peaceful protesters so that a president could have a photo op. You know, we used helicopters to flying low to move people across the city. I, I just I think. For a lot of us who have worked alongside the military our whole lives, that was a real moment of inflection and a real in or out moment. How are we going to take and use our apolitical military in America? Um, are we going to go with tradition where they're not involved in political events or are they going to start being, um, you know, beholden to just political whims? And I think um, Millie and Esper both responded and said it was a mistake.